Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we've got a special guest, Sue Ennis from HUD8 Mining. We're gonna be talking about the relationship of AI, high performance computing, and the crypto miner or Bitcoin miner companies. This is a really exciting one to watch, you guys. We've got a lot to talk about, but before we do, please take a second, hit the like button. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McDally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comment section below if you're currently holding shares of HUD8 Mining, what you think about the Bitcoin mining space in general, and your price prediction for Bitcoin moving into next year's halving event. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's interview. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we've got a special guest for you, Sue Ennis, who's the VP of Corporate Development from HUD8 Mining. Sue's joined us a number of times on the channel, and today we wanted to talk about some recent updates at the company and how AI is starting to impact the crypto or Bitcoin mining sector. So Sue, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Hey, super happy to be here. Lots has been going on with HUD and really excited to get into it. Yeah, for, for sure. So to start off, so you, you've been here a couple of times before. It's been a few months since you've been on the show. Can you give us a quick little update in terms of what hud has been up to uh, since you were on last? Yeah, absolutely. So we just uh, filed our amended S4. So the S4 is part of the whole process with getting SEC approval to um, have our U.S. Bitcoin merger go through. Okay. Um, so we just filed our amended S4. Um, and it's looking now that it's going to be 7.5 exahash of self-mining post-merger um, immediately upon close, wow. plus you know, the managed infrastructure side of our business, plus our HPC and AI suite of services, um, plus again, a meaningful uh, hosting business as well that we're picking up. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, US Bitcoin Corp also did win access to the Celsius bankruptcy assets. Okay. I can't touch much more about that. Um, you know, you're going to have to do your own sort of Googling. Your audience will have to do your, your sure. Googling about that. But, you know, that's been a development as well. Um, we signed another major cloud and colo provider, which we'll get into. Um, we had one of our customers complete a text to generative AI proof of concept. So we've got customers doing AI compute in our existing data centers. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, a lot has been going on. We'll get into it. But, yeah, that we're, we're pretty pumped about where things are going. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like a busy couple months. And I saw the big announcement about the seven and a half exahash, which is absolutely phenomenal. We've talked about the diversified revenue uh, with HUD8 as a major differentiator. You've got the data center business as well here in Canada. And that's really where I wanted to go for the second question, Sue. I saw the press release come out in relation to interior health and your high performance computing uh, business unit. So can you give us a little bit of details there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we signed Interior Health, and the significance of this deal is that Interior Health, Interior Health is a government entity. Okay. And long-term contracts, government contracts, tend to be very sticky customers in in your data centers. Um, and it's also incredible that a government healthcare provider is trusting us with their critical services. Um, and we also look at it as potentially a signal, sort of like a signal customer, because there's 80 other government organizations in BC. And the fact that okay. the major one has decided to trust HUD-8 with some of their you know, critical services, we think is a, re is a really good thing and a really sort of good catalyst for potentially future business. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree, especially the government component and the fact that it's health records. Those are uh, something they, they probably don't want to move around an awful lot. So that was a big win and, and really exciting to see. Um, now, we kind of alluded to this with the diversified revenue, but I know there's a number of other factors. For people who maybe have missed our initial discussion, Sue, what would you say really differentiates HUD-8 from some of the other miners we talk about on the channel? Yeah, so we're one of the oldest Bitcoin miners in the space. Um, but since Jamie Leverton, our CEO, took the helm in December 2020, we've really focused on diversifying our compute infrastructure. Okay. So we've been building and buying out data centers, traditional vanilla data centers, to complement our mining operations since about 2022. We started buying GPUs uh, in 2021, built a really good relationship with NVIDIA there. And so... Um, yeah, that's that's really two of the sort of main differentiators of HUD-8 is that we have this uncorrelated and, and really booming business that touches on the growth of the AI, machine learning, and just demand for cloud and co-location in North America. 
Okay, great. And the other one I, I would add in just for people who are unfamiliar is HUD8 Mining is uh, in possession of the biggest self-mined reserve of Bitcoin, I believe of any public company and, and in excess of 9,000 Bitcoin, I believe. Is that still accurate, Sue? Yeah, that's right. That's okay, right. great. So that's another one to keep in mind, you guys, if, if you're looking around at various different offerings. Now, um, you mentioned NVIDIA. Uh, I was just listening to their earnings call. I think they mentioned AI 108 times or something I saw. Um, so that's a good segue, Sue. Talk to us a little bit about AI. It's obviously all the craze right now. Everybody's talking about it. Um, how does that impact your business? Well, first of all, I think one of the really interesting things about this sort of AI hype is that it's not really following the same steps as past sort of hype bubbles that we've seen in the technology space. And what I mean by that is sort of one of the pillars of a traditional sort of hype bubble is that yeah. um, a lot of the multiples and expansion is based on sort of fluff versus okay. you have companies like NVIDIA or even Oracle that are coming out with actual solid earnings and beating earnings expectations and solid forecasts. So so that's what's a little different about, about sort of this time around with yep. this nascent technology of AI, which we think is really exciting. Um, and also on that, um, the market demand for AI in the past year or so has actually grown from about 95 billion to 900 billion. Okay. So you have incredible amount of demand, um, but low available inventory in the traditional data center space. So gotcha. I believe we, we, I've read somewhere, there's something like a vacancy rate of about only like 2.88%. Um, according, I believe it's to data center hawk. And then in secondary markets, that's more like, like 5%. Okay. So effectively in the traditional sort of hyperscaler data providers, there, there's not enough capacity to meet this growing demand. Um, and also, for example, Twitter took something like two years to meet one mil to get 1 million users versus chat GPT was yeah. able to get 1 million users within five days. So the demand is there, but the inventory is not there. And so this is an incredible opportunity. And why is that? So one of the things that's very unique about AI compute specifically, and it's different from cloud and colo, um, is that it's less latency sensitive and doesn't need 5.9 reliability. Okay. And so what it means is that there's an incredible opportunity for a new class of data centers that can be stood up at lower um, CapEx requirements than a traditional data center model would be, which is like eight to 10 million bucks per megawatt. Sure. So effectively operators who understand AI compute, understand the, the nuances of GPUs that are used for AI and machine learning. It's a lot different than, you know, ASICs for Bitcoin mining. Yeah. Um, people that have access to the GPU supply chain, the relationships to land, low power and building infrastructure at scale potentially stand to be um, effectively like the, the providers of, of this infrastructure that's desperately needed in this growing um, and nascent technology space. Gotcha. So, and also not only that, but HUD 8, as I said, we've already been building up our data center portfolio since the beginning of 2022. We do have some excess capacity. We already do have a client that's creating generative text to AI and using our compute um, there. And so, yeah, I think that that's, that's sort of how AI is impacting the sector, but it's not one of those things where just sort of any miner can now suddenly provide AI compute. That's not how it works at all. Um, but again, HUD is very well positioned to to capture this, this growing demand. So. Yeah, music to my ears there. And it, it's interesting, we've been talking about the, the HPC or high performance computing story and narrative with HUD 8 for quite some time. And uh, this whole AI thing just really plays plays well into your strengths. So that's phenomenal. I'm excited to see how that goes. There was just some big news from Applied Digital, saw a big rally in their share price too. So excited to see what that means for, for HUD 8 moving forward. Um, now May production, I'm going to give you some hardballs here, uh, uh, Sue. So May production came in at 147 Bitcoin, um, definitely low can, compared to historical averages per month. Uh, in, in addition to that, the exahash per second, so a key efficiency metric or Bitcoin per exahash, sorry, came in at 59.1. So can you talk to some viewers and investors about how we should interpret these numbers uh, heading into that, that big merger? Yeah, so look, um, we've certainly had some trouble with Drumheller for sure. Okay. Uh, remediation is underway, but again, I think fundamentally Drumheller is one of our oldest sites. Um, and 
but that this is sort of where, again, the significance of this merger and the potential growth profile is really where, you know, why it's sort of getting all of our attention, again, on top of some of our initiatives that we have within our existing traditional vanilla data center okay. operation. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention was one major differentiator, because um, again, Applied has done an incredible deal, an incredible job at being a first mover and really capturing this AI demand. Um, so kudos to them. But again, sort of the next in line really is HUD-8. And one thing that's very different between HUD-8 and Applied, which I forgot to mention in your last question, is we've actually been building out um, custom computing environment functionality that okay. customers can use within our own data centers. So we manage the hardware, we manage the virtualization layer, um, and uh, even the customers have the ability to effectively order compute incorporated building uh sorry billing is incorporated um and the fact that a customer can toggle between different iterations of compute within a private environment is a very unique offering wow. that no one else in the market in this sort of echelon of data center provider has it took us a year to build it okay um we're about to i believe it's about to if it's not already launched i think we're launching it this month um anyhow so point is drumheller has been tough for sure it has affected production but we are working on it. We're working on a ton of other things as well, like closing this merger and again, growing this HPC AI business um, that again, ultimately, I often say to investors, HUD-8 is effectively a call option on the, the growth of the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem and adoption and price appreciation, but also a growth, a call option on the growth of the high performance compute cloud, coal yep. and AI sector. So. Okay, amazing, and thanks. I know it's been tough, but again, we have plans in place, and it's going to be good. Yeah, and and that's one of the like there's puts and takes, right? You guys were one of the first people in the game of crypto mining, so obviously you're going to have more legacy equipment, and that needs updated, and just kind of goes with uh, goes with the territory. But I appreciate that. And another question, Sue, that a uh, few people have been asking me. Um, in your May production results, you didn't necessarily talk about the merger. I know you just put out a PR in relation to the merger, I think yesterday or the day before. Um, what can we expect in terms of timelines? I know we talked about Q2 as target date uh, mm -hmm. when it was announced. Um, can you give us any insight there? Yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to hit that Q2 target timeline. And the reason for that is we're effectively engaged in um, a letter writing process with the SEC, which is part of the whole merger completion process. Effectively, you know, we submit an S4, the SEC then writes us a letter asking questions about it. Um, as the business continues to grow, we then update that S4, write the SEC back. So we're currently engaged in, in um, the letter writing process with the SEC. I can't say much more than that. Um, again, we're, we, we are feeling confident that this merger will go through, but again, it's, it's sort of out of our hands and we have to follow the due process and do, um, you know, what's required, um, on with, with respect to the regulators. So not sure if we're going to hit the Q2 timeline, but again, we're working hard, tons of resources are being put towards getting this to completion. So Understood. That's sort of the most I can say. I know that's not saying anything, but that's that's the most I can say right now. No, that's all right. I appreciate the transparency. And uh, kind of the last main question I had for you was so much going on in the business, the high performance stuff, the AI, the mining, the merger. Uh, obviously, you're very busy with that stuff. What would you say is kind of the key focal point of the company at this point in time and then leading into the halving uh, event next year? So certainly this merger yeah. getting on the other side of this. <laughs> um, and I think really effectively positioning ourselves and building our business so that um, moving into the next having and in a post having world, as I said, we're a call option on the growth of the Bitcoin space and growth of high performance computing, but also really that investors look at us as effectively like enterprise infrastructure as a service. Exactly. So I'm an enterprise and I need machine learning, I need cloud, I need colo, I need digital asset you know, support. I want to mine Bitcoin, because again, we're going to have a hosting operation in a post-merger world. It's, it's, it's effectively like just a massive computing platform that we're building here. Enterprise infrastructure as a service is effectively you know, where we think this business is going. So 
Yeah, kind of the one-stop shop. And that's why I'm really excited about this investment because you are getting that diversification as Bitcoin difficulty gets harder in the halving event. We've got some other avenues here. Uh, so that's great, Sue. And, and the one other question I guess I'll throw in that I had, how should investors think about this merger? Is it pretty much uh, once it's approved, you hit the ground running and we can, we can see that exahash immediately, uh, machines are ready to go, capacity's ready to go, or will there be some sort of a ramp up period? Um, I think the latter is a good way of looking at it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Well, that's it for me. I, I really appreciate you coming on. This is definitely an interesting topic, the relation of AI with traditional mining operators. Sue, if people are looking for more information on your company or some of these uh, revenue opportunities that we talked about, where's the best place to get info? Yeah, so you can get it on our website, hut8.io, or follow me at Big Suey, B I G S U E Y, on Twitter. My DMs are open. Happy to chat anytime. And again, happy to be on here again soon. Hopefully, with maybe the co founders of US Bitcoin Corp, so you guys can get to know them a little bit more. Um, there's still lots to talk about for the rest of the year. Sure. Well, we're excited to have you. We're hoping to be the first outlet for that interview. So that'll be exciting. You guys uh, really appreciate your time today. If you're still watching the video at this point, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to join. We'd love to have you. And if you have any questions for Sue or the rest of the team from HUD8 that we didn't get to in today's interview, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll leave a link to your Twitter handle and the company info as well in the video description. Sue, thanks so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. See you guys soon. Bye. Take care. Thanks all.